Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 337 for Monday, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day 2022. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians here, as usual, in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. How are we today, Mr. Kent? We're quite good, Dave. That's it's good. Uh, a nice Valentine's Day. You got anything planned with your wife for tonight? Uh, we are actually, we're having dinner with our daughter, <laughs> which is... That's nice. Yeah, which it's actually really nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're looking forward to that. So very yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter was uh, visiting this weekend. We had a lovely weekend with her. Nice. And then we're going to drop her at the airport and then Terry and I are going to go find a place to do some Valentining. Nice. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Did you watch the Super Bowl yesterday, Paul? I did. It was a great game. It was a fun game. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I like, I like close games, obviously, you know, it keeps it interesting. I, I didn't have I any stories though. You know, like the, the, you know, the stories of the two quarterbacks were interesting. Yeah. You know, the stories of the two teams were, were reasonably interesting and um, just very enjoyable. We had some friends over. That's good. But uh, like many people, man, that halftime show opened some eyes, huh? It, it's been fascinating watching the conversation evolve mm -hmm. on, on social media, you know, over the last whatever, you know, however many hours it's been since it happened and since we recorded. I, I um, you know, I woke up this morning. I watched it uh, and I woke up this morning thinking, man, like that was epic. I, it it. They put the pantheon of rap and R and B on that stage. Like it, it, it would, it, it would have been like putting the Beatles and the Stones on the stage together with the Who and like, like you know, four other classic rock acts for that genre, right? I mean, like it was amazing. As I was waking up, thinking about, holy crap! Like all of those people, I, like they, they. They aren't the only ones that defined that industry, but they are the ones that have had a great, a great percentage of that industry's success and really, and really did drive it forward. And to, to have them all on stage together, I, like it feels unprecedented for well, a Super I gotta Bowl. Tell you, I, I, I'm going to open the kimono here and sure. it's not going to be pretty day. All right. <laughs> I knew none of the songs that were sung in that halftime show, none of them. And, and, you know, I kind of watched and, you know, I, I was observant of the energy that was building around this. Sure. But, you know, then the game went on and, you know, it was like, Oh, okay. Uh, you know, a, a genre of music I just don't know much about, but then, like you said, I kind of, I'm on social media, people saying best halftime show ever. And, and again, my interest as a, as a, a band that plays covers and is trying to, always grow our audience is like what moves people, right? Sure. Clearly that music moved people. I don't know. Well, it's how been it, moving it, people for decades. And I missed the whole thing. Is yeah. What I'm telling you. And, and so now I'm like, Whoa, how interesting. And, and it, what really is fun is the people who are often commenting on it are saying, Hey, you know, for all you people who are complaining about, you know, the petty and the Rolling Stones, you know, that was old people's music. Hey, my friends, <laughs> what you saw today is old people. It's music. also old people's music, right? Yeah, that's the thing. This was not new. This was this was a an homage and a celebration of of that genre. And and just in case, just for clarity, I'm I'm with you. I I missed that too. I you know when that was happening, the new music I was listening to back then was prog. Right. That that's when I started my deep dive into prog rock. And and yes, folks. There was new prog being produced back at the time that rap and hip hop were, you know, really coming into their own. And and on top of that, I was also I was that was when I was in Go Figure. And so I was really focused on our original music as well. And and so, like, that's what consumed my headspace. I was, I was of course, aware of it, but it I never had I never I never it never became my thing like like mm. other types of music have, have become. And. And and that, I mean that, that that doesn't matter. It's like that's just how life goes. But um, but yeah, I thought it. I like, and it was well done. It was well produced. I thought it was smooth and it it flowed well. And I, like I, I thought it was a good show. Um, even even you know for me where that 
like I said, that, that type of music doesn't have a resonance for me. I never, I never had a period of time where I was into rap or into hip hop yeah. or anything, but it like, it was an engaging show. I thought it was really good. But it, yeah. like I said, I thought it was good when I watched it. It took me sleeping on it and waking up to say, whoa. whoa. Yeah, and, and I realized I was late to the party. Like I could have realized this two weeks ago <laughs> or more. But, you know, realizing, well, holy crap, look who they put on that stage. Like that's yeah, a see, big I more, deal. I more reflect to how much it blew people's, that the fan base for that type of music. Oh, yeah. Behind. That's well, more what I'm reacting to. Like I was watching, like, oh, you know, I can you can kind of feel the energy's growing, you know, as this thing's going. People are really into it. Big time. And I have somewhat compartmentalized rap as music that wasn't and hip hop as music that A was generationally generationally not, you know, for me. Sure. Um uh, and uh, you know, I just didn't I just didn't get it, right? But I am always interested in music that moves people. And so yeah. The way I process this was I think about, you know, my set list and, and uh, you know, I pat myself on our back that we can play a Motown song and get 20-somethings dancing to it and not thinking it's novelty, right? So just, just, yes. take that as a, just take that as a point that, like, I enjoy the process of taking even music that's older for me, like 60s music would be older for me. Yeah. You know? um, and that we can play it and play it well and that it's such a good song that you treat the song with the proper reverence and, you know, play the hell out of it and it goes over, you know, that to me is where, where it is. But I am keenly aware that, you know, my audience for us to play eighties rock and some seventies rock and some sixties Motown, uh, you know, or seventies Motown, you know, that audience is not going to be there forever for me. Right. And I, you know, we play the types of events, these big public outdoor events, like shouldn't they appeal to everybody, you know, and so finding ways to do it. And the way we've looked is like um, like, um, like a Jonas Brothers song that we could turn into a, you know, a song that fits our style yeah. would be our nod to new music type things, sure. right? Sure, sure. But, but how, and, and we know you played with us, we, you know, a lot of Bruno Mars stuff that we can take, and that's just good dance music, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's doable. But what can a cover band do with that rap stuff that, you know, integrates it into a repertoire that worked. Like could any of that stuff, have you ever seen it done by a cover? By oh a cover? yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you just, uh, you, you have to, you have to deliver it like it's you delivering it, right? Like you have to take it seriously as you do with, with like the Motown stuff or you know, anything else you play. Right. But you know, the music that let's say is outside of your standard realm. Right. You know, but like you just have to, you'd have to learn it not for its kitsch value, right? Like when you learn a Bruno Mars song, you learn it because you want to learn the song. song. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think, I think you'd have to, and I'm, I'm saying this is never having done it. My, 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 the thing that got me to pay more attention to this happened much, much later in life. I, I wound up getting to know uh, Arabian Prince. He was one of the founding members of NWA, but was completely written out of the story. Like, wasn't even in the movie that was produced a couple of years ago, but he was in the tech business. He, his company made, it was the first instance that I had seen. This is relevant to the show here uh, of fit it yourself, custom fitted earphones. And I, I think the name of the company was it ears, E A R Z. I want to say, but he, it was, you know, he was one of the, the co-founders of the company. I wound up getting to meet him and uh, at CES and we had lunch together and like, the, you know, I fitted myself, but with their guidance with, for these things. I mean, it was a, it was a huge thing because it was like, I loved custom fits. And then, you know, here was this company that you could do it at home and it was way cheaper and, you know, all that good stuff. And so it was at that point that I was like, oh yeah, you know, I got to like pay a little more attention to this music, you know, that this person that I know that was a huge part of. And, and so I dug in a little bit, but it, again, it wasn't like, it, it wasn't at a time where it, it was going to stick for, for that. So I don't like, would I choose, would I be the one to bring this into one of our brand, bands? No. But if, if somebody in the band was like, yeah, let's do this. I was like, sure. Okay. Like if you, you, yeah. you drive, if you're going to drive the bus, let's go, let's do it the right way. Yeah. 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 And the house rockers, um, Strom, our, our dearly departed bass player, not not, not departed. departed but yeah, so, yeah, he's okay, dearly, right? Dearly moved out of state. Okay, bass player. I was going to say, I he thought was, I saw him post on Facebook yesterday. Everything's okay. 
he was a, a non-ironic rapper. I mean, he enjoyed mm. the art of it. And so we worked it into the show. A there you time. go. And we, we worked it into like play that funky music, like a breakdown about that. And it was, I, I remember every time we would do it, it would turn heads. Um, it would put smiles on people's faces. It would elicit a physical response, people dancing in a different way when he would break things down that way. Yeah. Um, and he was really good at it. I mean, he kind of, you know, emoted a, an interesting story uh, in his raps. They were, they were, you know, tweaked a little bit, you know, for different situations. Uh, and it was really, it was really kind of cool. I don't know anybody in our band that could authentically deliver that. Yeah. And that's, that's actually one of the interesting things about the type of music. It really demands that. I mean, if, if you take the approach that you're going to pay respect to any type of music you're going to do, right? If that you're really going to try and do good by any particular song or genre. Rap is a different thing, right? I mean, you know, rap is, if you can't dive into the meaning, the social messages, all that type of stuff, I would think it's kind of hard and it would be insulting to rap fans, right? It probably. Yeah, I would think so. But I mean, like, the same thing could be true of the style of music that I was into at the time instead, right? Like prog rock, like somebody goes up and plays, uh, you know, a, a, a flubbed half version of Spirit of Radio or something, right? You, you know, and yeah. a roundabout or whatever. And it's like, okay, like, you know, you're making fun of this. That's going to alienate people, right? So I guess that's where it comes down to is are you are you attempting to do this in a way that is – respectful of the situation. And and that leaves a lot to be like, you could reinterpret the song in a different way that fits your band or whatever, but taking it and being serious about it or taking it and treating it like you think it's a joke. And, and those two things, unless, unless you're a really good comedian and, and there are musician comedians out there, you know, Bowling for Soup has had a long career of, of doing exactly that. And yeah. they're fantastic at it. Uh, but unless you really know what you're doing, it yes. probably isn't going to work. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like comedy in the wrong hands is a, is a, yeah. is no good thing, right? That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm just kind of li listening to our conversation, thinking about our conversation. You know, overwhelmingly, what I am exposed to, what I see, is that cover music is largely '60s, '70s, and '80s music. You know, in your I, band, at, sure. No, 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 no. I'm saying, like, looking out from what I see, you know, the other, the other uh, musician podcasts that are about cover bands, you know, there's the 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 one that's on Facebook that where there's a lot of people posting stuff. It yeah. is largely, yeah, that's fair, yeah, seven seventies and eighties, you know, yeah. and and then there still is some sixties stuff, largely seventies and eighties music, and we've had this conversation about like I kind of missed it, so. You know, as I've looked for cool 90s and 2000s music, to, you know, because I think it's a good thing to do as a cover artist, you know, is to try and get, have something for everybody um, in a way that you can faithfully do it. Yeah. I don't see a lot of, I don't see a lot of Eminem or, or Dre, you know, mixed into sets right next to Scorpions and, and, uh, <laughs> and Jesse's Girl, right? Yeah, it would fit better in a 90s scenario. Right, like uh, well, no, no, but what, what about just like a wedding band? If you're playing a wedding band, you're probably paying for people in their twenties or thirties, right? Yeah. How does this How does this music work when you just want to throw a great party and you know you're the band and uh, you know where Where do you we like you we do? did We did that Nelly tune in um, uh, getting hot in here, hot in here. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. With the two R's because one R's never enough. Uh, but yeah, we we did that in Uptown and I would guess if that band were ever to play it again and I don't know if it will you know COVID changed a lot of things uh, but my guess is that that song would stay in the set list it did really well it was always really funny to see so, you know like 85 so that, year old grandma throwing yes. down man like so it was that's great my question is like yeah. there is there is digestible you know baby got back there's di there's digestible the hot in here is not cover. digestible that's it's a it's really? a it's a filthy song played I know, no, no, no. but it, it's I've a filthy. It played by cover bands. Yeah, but it it's a, a filthy band. song. It's like yeah. the, the wrong thing to play at a wedding, especially for eighty-five year old grandma. And then to see her, you know, spinning on the pole, man. It's a, it's a, it's an interesting take. <laughs> and it, but it's happened, you know. It's a lot of weed at weddings, I think these days. I don't know, but um, yeah, but you know, like so. Yes, it can work. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I I would put it out to our loyal listeners out there. Like, do you? Put rap and hip hop into your sets along with classic rock and 
you know, classic soul music and, mm. you know, it, it, how do you handle it? I mean, like, you know, most of us can identify with the music that we're, that we're doing just raps and hip hop seems to demand a different, a different level of connection to emote it respectfully. Um, you know, you gotta be able to deliver it just well, you like you gotta be able to deliver a journey tune, right? Like not every singer on the planet is going to be able to do that. And the same is true with, with this stuff. You know, you go, you want to go do California love or something like that. That's, you got to be able to deliver that. So. No, but that's what I'm saying. I think my yeah. question is, is, is it possible for someone channeling Steve Perry to channel Dr. Dre, you know? Maybe. Or, or maybe. Yeah, maybe. And, and that's what I'm asking. Yeah, so, I, you know, I, I'd be interested to see yeah. who does it. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see a band who, um, this is just part of their basically, you know, top 40. Right. I don't know, like Hot in Here and uh, Baby Got Back, you would almost call those GB songs, right? If I mean, if you really were putting together a wedding set and you want to cover all genres, those would be the ones you would choose, right? These days, that's what's in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I, uh, I'm interested how deep people go with this stuff. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com. We want to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, th I, I agree. Yeah, it's interesting. Any music that, that gets people's attention and makes people vibe to it, I'm interested in. I mean, I would say that. I, and I'm, like I said, it's not pretty to open this kimono, but I, I yeah. literally, I was like, oh, look at that halftime show. Like, I know these are pretty big names. I don't really know their stuff, but yeah. um, whoa, something's going on there. People seem to be really into it. <laughs> and, oh, and yeah. Then, like, you know, a quick glance at Twitter and, and you're like, oh, this blew people's minds. How did I miss this whole genre of music? Yeah. Like I said, I had to sleep on it to understand why it blew people's mind. I just hadn't, had, you know, I've had a lot going on. I just, you know, it's like, oh, those people are playing. Okay, great. You know, and then it's like, wait a minute. They had all of those people in the same place. That's yeah. freaking amazing. <laughs> like, it just didn't hit me. I don't know. Yeah. Funny. I've been, um, I've been focusing on new music. We um, were in the final mixing stages of the bitter pill, uh, the next bitter pill record. And, um, and there have been so, like I say, I, I say this carefully because it we have been retracking some things like like I, I wound up doing some vocals the other day. I, the, the, uh, there were some parts where it was like, oh, they, Dave, you sucked on this. It was like, yeah, that makes sense. So I think I had COVID that day. But, you know, um, so we've been retracking stuff and then remixing and or, or you know, iterating on the mixes it, to say remixed means we'd already released it and we haven't. But, you know, just just kind of fine tuning the mixes, if you will. And things are, yeah. I, I just got, uh, I just got some of the tracks. Actually, I got all the tracks that uh, Chris remixed or f did another round of mixing on this weekend. I've, I've only been able to hear two of them before we recorded this episode. And I'm super like, it's like, Oh man. Okay. Like this <laughs> is, yep. This is where these songs need to be. Like it's really, I'm super proud of this. I, I can't wait until we can push it out there and then go start playing it for people. And, like it's going to be, we'll have to relearn these or have to learn these songs. A lot of them are studio creations as we've talked about here, but, um, but it, yeah, it's, I'm stoked. I'm really, really excited about this. And then, and, and cool. fling and fling has gotten into, we are, we are well down the path of month. Number one of what we're trying to make our new system, which is to record and release an original a month. Uh, we have a, we have plenty of songs. So, I mean, it, next month's song could be a brand new one, but it could also be one that, you know, we've had for a year or more, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so, but, but just hasn't been recorded and released yet. And so it, got, I it, really get the sense when you talk about, um, about bitter pill, well, actually now about fling again. And I guess, you know, it's fair to give a full disclosure, you know, Dave and I are keenly aware that our bandmates listen to this. And so, you know, we choose, it's not planned, but we just common sense, you know, what is the right things that we want to share with our, our, our podcast audience, you yeah. know, what's appropriate versus having a conversation with a band member directly. Like you, you never want a band member to, to hear something for the first time no. through what we do here. But I would like to say that certainly with Bitter Pill and clearly now again with Fling, it seems like you are in a... Um, Everybody's on the same page in both those bands moment, you know, creatively, you know, work wise, you know, effort wise. It, it seems like both those bands are having a, that those streaks of, yeah, we're all on the same page right now. Yeah. It's kind of scary. 
<laughs> well, I mean, I no, it's fantastic. I, it really is. And I have to let myself enjoy it and not question it. You know, I'm I'm a I've been I mean, I'm 50 years old, right? So I've been playing music since I was 14. I've been in bands that have done, you know, fairly well. And I've been in bands that have completely fallen apart, some of which are the same bands, right? You know, it can do well and then it can crash and burn. And uh, it's easy to be jaded about things. In fact, even with Bitter Pill, it's been um, it took, you know, I would like to say it was last summer where I started feeling like an equal member of the band, but I also felt that, you know, in the studio here and I, and I, I don't, I have not said this to my bandmates um, and I hope it comes across the right way. You know, that band started, this iteration of that band started without a drummer, right? Like they, they were playing, they are, we do. See, we see, see me, see how I am here. Uh, we, we play, you know, folk music with a twist and it made perfect sense for them to do it without a drummer. And and so they did. And then there was one gig where they said, Hey Dave, you, you know, we want a drummer for this gig. You, would you be willing to learn our tunes? The ones that you don't already know and, and then come play with us. And I said, absolutely. And then it was, you know, um, would you be interested in doing another gig with us? And it was like, yeah. And then it was, and then it became, well, you're welcome to come to any gig. And it was like, well, that, that Okay. All right. And then it was, well, now you have to be at the gigs because, you know, this is how the band is. Right. And so it was it was this this evolution where there never was a moment in time where we had this conversation of like, this is, you know, these are. Yeah, this is this is the band you're in it. But it it became sort of it was it was obvious yet unspoken. Right. Mm. Especially as things. And then covid happened. And, and that, you know, and then we, we, obviously we stayed in touch. We released the record that we recorded right before COVID. But again, even that record, it was, Hey Dave, we, you know, we're doing, you know, X number of songs. We want to have you on, you know, seven of them or something. And then I wound up playing on more than, than seven. I didn't play on everything, but you know, it was like, Oh, actually drums on this song would be good. So, but it was still being driven by, I was, I, in many ways I was, you know, the, the, the guest who was playing drums, not mm. the band member deciding things jointly with the rest of the band. Providing input. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and th that has evolved and that changed, you know, very much so it, during COVID as much as, you know, last summer when we finally were able to start, you know, playing gigs again and all that. And then obviously with, with, you know, maybe not obviously, but I'll say it, you know, this time in the studio was very much an equal collaboration. We, you know, we acted like a band because we are a band and, and, but it, you know, as, as much of that question was driven, my question was driven by circumstance. It's also driven by being jaded and protective of my own emotions and all of that stuff. And I have to be really sure. careful not to be jaded and protective. It's, you know, it's like the, well, I, I never want to, you know, have a, a, a girlfriend again because I, the, the last breakup was terrible or whatever. Right. It's, yeah. but the thing is like, yes, you do. You, you gotta, you know, put that behind you and, and open your heart and, and do it because that's where the magic is. And that's where the magic is with, with music. It's in fact, I've often related to the two things to people who aren't musicians who aren't in bands. It's like, yeah, it's like, and I've even said to my wife, I'm like, it's, you know, it's, it's weird. You let me cheat on you with these bands that I play in. And, you know, uh, happy but, Valentine's day. Yeah. And also happy Valentine's day. Yes. Thank you. Yep. But you know, it like, it, it very much is, you, you know, you, you expose yourself and I, I, I'm assuming I'm not saying anything that listeners to the show don't already know, but you know, you expose yourself in a pretty raw way when you're playing music with people in general. And then especially when you're in a band with people, it, you know, it becomes, it is a, a marriage. Uh, it's a family. It's all of those things. And it's awesome. Yeah. I love it. And I'm really stoked to be in, um, you know, to, to have what we have with bitter pill. It's, it's great. Yeah. And, and with Flink for sure. I mean, we've had this with Flink for a very long time um, for better, you know, in different capacities. And I'm curious to see how Fling evolves. Um, very excited. All of us about recording music. I don't know. I, we are all 
eager to get out and play this music. And I, I yeah. hope that that can happen that in a way that works for this, that like this group of, of people. And as much as I know that, you know, you've introduced me to the, to the fling guys, I would say, I would bet that you are all in the same place. Curious to see how this thing evolves, right? Yeah. Like you have been together for a long time. You know each other fairly well. Yeah. You've re you rejiggered some things to, you know, give a little new life or you know new direction. Correct. New breath. And, uh, and there's willful intent that this be, you know, continues to satisfy what you all are in it for. Yeah. I, I would say that here's a good, here's a, here's a good Kent's edict for you, right? Yeah, man. Uh, every band is always fighting against gravity. Mm hmm. Yeah. You want to be up there, but the forces of nature are, are, you know, are trying to bring you down to earth. The force you know? of average, man. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think about, um, I think about my group and, uh, you know, we have a, we have a good thing. I mean, we play good gigs. We get paid well. We play a lot of gigs. We play gigs for a lot of people. Sure. It's a good group of guys. And, to, and I, I've said this to you before, like, these are always very interesting conversations to me because you and I have very, you are the band army leader perspective and I'm the band leader perspective in a lot of these conversations, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. You are the you are the rank and file, yep. and I'm in largely the organizer, right? I still find that you know, I feel a lot of pressure to not let gravity uh, take hold of my group, right? Like I exert a lot of energy to try and keep us in the stars, you know, try and keep us up in the sky, um, and that energy takes the form of attempts at communication, you know. Uh, socially as well as band business stuff, just, you know, wishing guys a happy birthday or their spouse a happy birthday or, yep. you know, sharing with the guys good things that are going on. Um, you know, Slack is a tool for us to be, you know, communicated, um, in encouraging interesting discussions about music and, you know, songs that we might play. You know, social time, we get a couple of uh, restaurant nights a, a year that we try to go out and just enjoy being a band together. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Which is harder, right? But all this... Um, I feel as though often many guys in the bands are like, you know, this is great. This is great. Could end at any minute, but this is that's great. right. They're jaded. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're seasoned pros. So of course they, 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 they have the capacity and the experience that would justify any, or it would make it understandable. I don't want to say justify, but it would make it understandable that they would be jaded and, and protected. Exactly. The things I was just talking about. It makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. What, did, what was it? Timothy B. Schmidt in the Eagles, like at their peak, said every band is on the verge of breaking up at all times. That's right. I, and he's and, not wrong. And, and then Stephen Van Zandt said, so do everything you can if you have one that works to keep it together. That's it. Yeah, exactly. But it takes everybody. That's the thing. It's like even an elite led band. I will set the stage for the guys, but they have to buy in. They oh, if they do, don't buy in, it doesn't matter. So much I, there's only so much I can do, you know, and I'm willing to do a lot. But, you know, it's really up to everybody to make a band a special thing. Yes. And, and you know, the funny thing is, and th this is where I, from my perspective, I think bands, uh, musicians are often defeatist. They're, you know, fighting against their own best interest. Because, you know, the upside is the world wants bands. They want to disappear and see joy on a stage and see, you know, people having fun playing together and disappear into that environment you can create as a band, you know, and in, in delivering that kind of music and creating that type of, uh, but the, the world desperately wants to see great bands. Like the world has always wanted that. And it's yeah. especially true now. Like that's, that's what really, that's what I took away from one of the things I took away from, you know, all those bitter pill gigs we did last summer is when that band, we can all, we are all, we all have the capacity to be super jaded. Right. Like and and mm -hmm. and have demonstrated great skill at that. Uh, you know, I certainly can speak for myself, but I think it's fair that I can speak for, you know, other members of the band. We you know, we're, we're we all are opinionated. We all have been there. And and yet when this band takes the stage, perhaps because we know that we just go out there and it is pure joy the whole way through. And. It works for people. Like people are so be. into it. Yeah. It's which which is I mean, it's amazing. And it's I love it. It's great. Yeah. Enjoy, it's great. brother. 
Thanks. Yeah, I, I have been. Yeah. I, like I said, I just occasionally have to remind myself, like, don't be the one to screw this up. You know, uh, you know, you could. The defense stipulates <laughs> you are capable of screwing this up. <laughs> so don't. You know, and the guy on your on your right shoulder is really encouraging you to do it because he <laughs> likes to mess with you. Yes, listen to the guy on your left shoulder. That's the idea, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's fine, you know. But yeah, it's um, it's good, it's good. So, yeah. Hey, I want to share with you a couple of just cool uh, gear gap things. Yeah, little gear things. So, you know, I think guitar players buy a lot of guitars because when they're not gigging, you just want to. You just want to feel, you just want to feel the act of being a musician transacting in your body, right? Okay. And you know the the rush of of new gear is is a it's a medicine in between times when you're gigging. I don't know why it's not the same for every, uh, but you have more than one drum set. I mean, you're not you're not immune to this, right? You you get your gear acquisition syndrome bouts, don't you? I do, and not like a guitar player. Um, but I, I do know drummers that are like obsessed with buying snare drums and, yeah, and I, and yeah. And I have this one guy who's this one friend uh, that I do all those, or I was doing those. Um, I guess we have another one coming up. The, the Marvin Gaye things, uh, the what's going on performances. Mm -hmm. He, I think he had a different brand new ride symbol at every rehearsal and gig. He's like, you know, he's just like seeking and seeking. And it's like, dude, like that symbol sounds good. It's like, let's go. But you know, like, yes, I, I, I get it. I don't suffer from it terribly. Although I really, I'm, I'm looking for a new kit nice. <laughs> gig with, um, with bitter pill. Like I, I just, I, I have something in mind, but I haven't crystallized what that is yet. So I just keep looking. I have these Facebook, uh, not Facebook Craigslist, um, searches like automated searches on Craigslist that I get emails every day, sometimes like five times a day when things come up that match yeah. like drums or drum set or whatever. And I just look at them and delete them. And and I'm waiting for one to like spark my interest and be like, okay, th this is the direction I want to go. Whether I buy, you know, the used thing on Craigslist or I find it somewhere else or whatever is fine. I just, I don't know what I want, but I want something, I think, I don't know. I so yes, I get for it. Drummers, for drummers, you know, you're, you, you have to store these things. If you were to have 10 drum kits in the same way that a guitar player would have 10 guitars. I mean, there's a, there's a physics problem for drummers. You should see the room next to my studio I'm, here. I guess. I'm yeah. sure. Right. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yes, we. I think as a guitar player, we fill time between gigs because we love it so much. You know, wanting to have that dopamine hit of of being a musician in some way and, and acquiring gear is one tack to that. I will tell all my brother guitar players out there, um, accessories are a way cheaper way to go <laughs> and uh, and kind of fun too. So I, I came across two that I just wanted to share with people that I'm really happy with. So I've just bought my second. G seventh performance three art capo. So these are, are capos for guitars, electric or acoustic guitars. Um, they're pretty expensive as capos go. You can get capos for you know eight bucks, ten bucks. Yeah. These are these are like fifty dollar capos, but I can play so far up the neck capoed, which I try to do in my acoustic oh. shows just to get different sounds without any kind of intonation problems. And th th it is literally the best capo I have ever used. It doesn't pull things. Uh, sharp as I go up the neck, uh, it is it is exactly what a capo should be worth every penny. So that's the and there was G7. a particular model. Yeah, what what's the the model number of this, or is it just the G seventh capos well, in G, general? G seventh capos in general are very good. I've owned other ones of them before. The one that I'm on to now is a G seventh Performance Three. All right, cool. Or, we'll put a link in the show notes to that. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, and yeah, then the yeah. other thing is, I given that it's Valentine's Day, I would like to profess my love for Gator cases. Man. You know, I, I I find, especially with my acoustic gigs, I measure one part of measuring their success is if I can get into and out of the gig in as few trips to the car as possible. All right, yeah. And so you know, I I bought a cart because you know I was I was tired of having to do two or three hand trips, so I bought a cart to load my stuff up. But I still have a little bit too much stuff, even for the cart that I have. So I went out looking for another acoustic gig bag. And I got this Gator. Uh, it's called a GPG Pro Pro Go Series Ultimate Gig Ultimate Gig Bag. Um, it's got pouches galore. I can put my tablet in there. I can put several cables in there. I can put my G7 capo in there. And uh, beautiful, great. You know what you want in a gig bag is good protection, good storage, fairly lightweight. Uh, you know you, that you could. I for me, it's important to be able to throw it over my back so I can push my cart with my sound system in it and put the guitar over my back and be in pretty good shape. So anyway, 
I own two or three Gator Case products. All of them are freaking awesome. I mean, this I would not be surprised if they were a, a, a company of musicians because they own like a utility case for cables and a mixer, and I own a guitar case, and these go with me to every gig I do right now. Super well made. The protection aspect is great. You know, they're going to last a long time. Um, and just the convenience factors, the yeah, especially on the guitar case, the extra pouches are just super duper duper. So worth every penny, makes my life easier, protects my gear, gets me in and out of my gigs faster. I love Gator cases. Yeah, same. I, I have, uh, and they, they've got, I think, lifetime warranties or, or yep. something very, very close to it. I have a Gator case for my drum hardware, and I bought the first one, I don't know, let's say 15 years ago, you know, and it's great. It, it puts all my, you know, my stands and my rack and, you know, all that stuff in there. And it, it's got wheels, which is great, you know, for yep. loading in and out. And over time, the, the axle for the wheels started to bend and the wheels actually started to kind of bend outward from the bottom, just from like bouncing on like stairs and things like that. And so I wrote to Gator and I said, Hey, um, hey you know, this happened. What, you know, can you send me a new axle or whatever? They're like, yeah, what's your address? And so I gave him my address and then a whole new case showed up. I'm like, you want me to send back the old one? They're like, no. I'm like, okay, cool. And so we used the old one for mic stands. And then, you know, that, that, that was maybe seven years in two years ago, same kind of thing started to happen. So I wrote him. I'm like, listen, I, I don't expect anything from you uh, for free, but, I, you know, can I, can I, again, can I just buy like the axle part of it? And this time they didn't has to, have to ask for my address because they had it from the old email chain and a, another case showed up and it's like, guys, like, I, I want to pay you. So next time I'm, I'm hesitant to even write to them for support because, yeah. you know, I kind of feel like I should send them money again, but yeah, yeah no, great no. cases. Gr yeah. Great. I, I, I'm with you. I, I had a, uh, uh, an iPad holder mm. that actually was a pretty expensive one. And um, one of the rubber grips came off and I wanted to, you know, just buy another rubber grip. Sure. And, and um, I contacted the company and it was fairly new and um, they were like, no, you got to, you got to buy a whole nother one. And I was, I was really put off by that. Right. Yeah. I just, you know, I was willing to buy it. Right. The part. They don't have the part available and they, but I would have thought. I would have thought just the interest of good customer service. I mean, it's, we're talking about a fifty, sixty dollar, you know, thing. I would have thought that they would want to make someone happy if if part of their gear fell apart. That they would want to. I didn't, you know, I couldn't find a guitar center receipt for it, and you know, I I wasn't going to spend any more time on it because all I wanted to do was buy the part. I didn't want to buy another another whole iPad holder. I wasn't yeah. willing to buy the part. I was waving a credit card at them, but no, they didn't yeah. want it. Yeah, I had the same problem. And I'll, I'll call them out for it, it with um, ultimate stands. You know, they, yeah. they come with this. I don't know what they what their warranty is supposed to be, but like their their stands are supposed to last forever. And you just replace the parts that wear out, which is like, mm -hmm. OK, fine. But their stuff wears out more than any other thing I have. And it's super heavy and feels heavy duty and all that. But like the little pieces on it, like the the for me on the mic stands, it's the uh like the little wing nuts or whatever, they just stop seal, you know, like cr gripping the the thing. And it's happened, yep. I don't know, five or six times. It's like, guys, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't want to do this again. I don't want to get to a gig and have it just like stop working. It's no more. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. So, yeah. But that's, I mean, we do, we beat the crap out of this stuff, right? Like it's way different. I have some super cheap mic stands here in the studio. I think I bought five of them for 50 bucks or something. And I very specifically left the tags on them and told the guys in the, in, in the band, you know, it was fling that was gigging a lot. And we bring gear from the studio there. I'm like, anything with the tag on it stays in the studio because I know that what kills these things is tearing them down, throwing them around, setting them up. You know, it's that, that movement of all the parts that wears them out. And those stands I think I bought also 15 years ago and I can see them. They're, they're sitting right there, but nobody's changed them in 15 years. So they hold on. It's, it, you know, but the stuff that is constantly, you know, set up and torn down and set up and torn down and bounced around in the, in the back of your car or whatever, like that stuff wears out. And you just gotta, you gotta get more eventually. So, yep. Yep. That's how it goes. Um, what, what gear do you folks like? 
What's what's your favorite new piece of gear? What's the thing that you want to profess your love for? Let us know. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com. We'd love to hear from you. I think that's what I got for today. You have anything else, man? No. I I don't know why. This seemed like a I really enjoyed today's conversation. Same. All the things we talked about today are really are interesting to me in different ways. You know, that that concept of re-looking at that genre of music is yeah. really eye-opening to me. And I like that that concept about bands fighting fighting the the the, the, uh, the force of average. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, the force of average. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy. It, honestly, that's one of the reasons that I love doing this show. If while we're in the the mode of professing love, is even like when there's nothing happening in you know my bands or whatever, because you know you go through phases where there's things happening and then there's things not happening or whatever. But just you know having this to focus on every week and be like, yeah, like we can keep pushing forward, we can yeah. keep doing things even when there's not a thing on the schedule. Like it makes a big diff for me. It makes a big difference for my attention and motivation. I always say, what what is it? Peter Drucker said that uh, that which is monitored is managed, and and this helps me do exactly that. Like it helps me monitor like where I am. You know, even if I've got a ton of stuff going on, I got to carve out you know ninety minutes to come and do gig gab and talk about music, and that can be a great. It has been a great thing. I don't even say I don't even say it can be. I like the proofs in the pudding. We're coming up on. Uh, Saturday, right, is uh, the 19th is our uh, seven-year anniversary of doing this show. Amazing. Right? So it's pretty cool. Hasn't gotten stale for me. I hope you're still good with it. Uh, no, it's it, quite the opposite. Like, it's it's now a mandatory part of my week for, from, like, <laughs> a, a desired mandatory part of my week, not an obligated mandatory part of my week. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. Cool, then. All right. That's what we got for today. Thanks for hanging out with us, folks. Thanks for seven years. Uh, it's been, uh, it's amazing. And we're going to keep doing it. Um, as long as you keep All listening, right. we're going to keep doing it anyway. I'm just going to be honest about that. But as long as you're always performing. That's the idea. See you next week, folks. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Dave.